Hey you guys, it's Tony Tucker with Cunez Nissan of Davenport, and this is another Cunez Car Convo. Today we'll be interviewing the gifted improv actor and the performing arts supervisor of Junior Theater, Daniel Sheridan. So Daniel. Yeah? Thank you so much for joining us today while we cruise around in this gorgeous Nissan Pathfinder. Sure. And we're going to talk a bit about a local organization that you are very, very passionate about, which is the Junior Theater. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about how long you've been doing it for. Oh gosh, you know, I, um, I've been doing Junior Theater. I started as a student back in 94 when I was 10, 11 years old. And kind of did it all growing up and joined the teenage staff and then came back in the summers at works while I was at university uh, and then went away for a few years and then moved back in 08 and kind of took, took the lead on the program and I've been there been there ever since my plan was never to move back to the Quad Cities uh, <laughs> I don't think it's anybody's plan yeah I know I do. know well yeah well and I you know junior theater was at kind of a um, a bit of a crisis point in its evolution and stuff and so I was like you know maybe I have something to contribute for a, you know two or three years and I've been here 15 years and I love it so well, it's, you must, it's, you must gotten, I really uh, enjoy it you must have gotten in love with the chaos that was going on yeah yeah well I mean you know theater one thing that's awesome about theater is like there's always a deadline and the deadline comes with a whole bunch of people coming to watch you right so <laughs> the chaos or the bringing things together um, especially working with like different artists and different people right and that is it's it is it's all part of the fun and then throwing the kids in the mix too um and teaching them all those skills it's yeah it's it's a good time and what's the clown's name okay yeah sure so our our clown is showtime pal showtime pal. yeah right. yeah i know you had mentioned you you yourself at Bev junior theater yeah way back Briefly as a child. You definitely, you definitely would have been there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably would have been there. She probably probably would have been like late 90s, early 2000s. I would have been uh, like 2000. Oh, yeah, right around 2008. Right around 2008. Okay. Yeah. I've been right around my coming back and everything. Yeah. So. Born in 97. So. Sure. Yeah. Right on. Uh, but that's one of the staples that I at least remember, you know, from my childhood is Showtime Owl. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is Junior Theater is the second oldest children's theater in the United States. So, I know, most people don't know that, so. So when did it first come together? So it first came together back in 1951. Wow. The founder, Mary Nicewander, uh, Mary Fleur Nicewander, had moved to the Quad Cities with her husband. She was a traveling actress, and they had three kids, and they were just kind of rotating through town, doing different gigs, and her husband passed suddenly uh, in 1946, 47. So she started teaching voice and elocution and diction. And then somebody in the recreation department, Leon Bredbeck, who would become Showtime Pal, the first really? Showtime Pal, reached out and said, hey, why don't you come out to the parks? She was running the Women's Recreation League and they had all these drop-in parks. Why don't you come out to the parks and do some theater classes? And Mary said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll try that out. By the end of the summer, all those kids wanted to meet all those other kids from around Davenport and Junior Theater was kind of born from that. Um, and then from that group, they did their very first main stage production, like full production that next year. So it started in 51 and then the first main stage show was in uh, 1952. It wasn't the same location, was it? No, yeah, that's a good you question. Know? Yeah, no. So from like, from 1951 to 1978, Junior Theater, like home base moved 15 different times. They were constantly uprooted, oh, wow. shuffled around. So it was actually the mid 1960s that the nonprofit was founded. Um, and that's, you know, the generous donation that Coons, uh, Coons made today to Junior Theater. That goes to the nonprofit. Uh, make sure that that comes back into the program as resources and materials for the kids. Uh, but it was founded to find a home. So. It took them about 15 years, and then we landed at the Andy Wittenmeyer campus uh, here in Davenport, which is an old Civil War camp and an old orphanage, and, but it's been junior theater since 
1978 when we moved in. So it's crazy. Yeah, we've been growing on campus there too. Uh, when I started in 2008, you know, we have our main theater building and we have three cottages with acting studios and stuff. Um, but we're now in uh, 10 cottages, like this whole campus, we've really grown and expanded, so. That's so um, unreal. Yeah, Did it's, it's pretty cool. seen where it started at now, or back then to where it is now, I mean, the chaos that was going on where it's uprooted, and they yeah. said it was to find a home, and it definitely has, you know, right here at the heart of Quad City. Yeah, and that was one of the things, you know, when I, when I came back in 2008, I mentioned our founder, Mary, mm -hmm. you know, she ran the program from 1951 to 1990, uh, when she passed, she was like 83 years old. Old time, yeah. Yeah, and then from 1990 to 2005, Bonnie Gunther ran the program. That When I grew up, Bonnie was running it. But then from 2005 to 2008, five different people took over a quick interim, took over a quick interim, and so that was kind of part of the chaos was, you know, sorting all that out right um, right so but in 2008 i had i was part-time and i had a little part-time staff of about six of us um, and we had about 300 enrollments that year but this last year we peaked at just over 2,000 enrollments and we have a staff of about 40 part-timers teaching theater dance tumbling doing productions uh, are a lot of those seasonal or do you do a lot of those like year round. No, a lot of them are, part, are just part-time employees, a lot of our instructors. And then for the main stage company, you know, those are independent, those are individual contracts for like directors and designers, because they're only coming in to work on one production. So that's, awesome. that's kind of an independent contractor thing. And so, um, yeah, we have kids from over 35 different cities and towns. Um, people drive 45, 50 minutes to come take classes. So it's a really special regional thing that um, yeah I think some of the Quad Cities in general should be proud of owning you know, oh absolutely yeah. absolutely well and for those of those who are like watching this interview um, tell us like about the organization's mission oh yeah 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 so you know like it'd be easy to think you know come to junior theater be a star bright <laughs> yeah. lights you know what I mean like the next Tony Award winner or prima ballerina, that sort of thing. And we do, we boast uh, a Tony Award winner in our alumni, but that's that's not the point. I mean, right. even he would tell you um, it's the, the program's really just about giving kids the opportunity to be comfortable in their bodies yes. and in front of people, to, uh, to speak with confidence, you know, to communicate with creativity. Um, all of those soft skills that are so important. So even if they don't end up pursuing theater, you know, they can coach a little league team or join the PTA or lead a board meeting or work at a car dealership. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And do like, interviews do as well. Do interviews while driving. I'm very impressed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, these, these cars uh, make it pretty dang easy. I told yeah, you yeah. Yeah, so d does, does the car have any sort of uh, features that help you drive or anything, alert features? or anything? So, I mean, yeah, a lot of alert features. So, like, uh, the blind spot detection is a big one that people like, you know, oh, yeah. tell them when the car's in your blind spot. But, like, uh, when you go on the highway, like we're doing now, sure. um, you have your intelligent cruise control, so it kind of tells when you're uh, getting close to a car and will then gauge their speed and match it until they get out of your way. Real nice. But when you do that in a vehicle like the Pathfinder, it does have the steering wheel assist. Uh -huh. So it's not like a co-pilot where you can just take a nap in your car drives, sure. which it shouldn't do. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it helps guide you in the lane lines and make those slight turns for you, keep you straight. Uh, you have to keep your hands off the wheel, but it just kind of takes some of that stress off of you, especially on those longer drives. Right. Um, so that's one of the nice features. And then yeah. this actually has a heads up display. So right now I can see the speed limit where I am on my windshield. Oh. Uh, I can also see the speed I'm going. I can customize it. I can see if I had navigation on, it could tell me when my next turn is and how far I am from it, oh, as wow, well as like great. the song. So then you're not looking on. down or looking over, like exactly. your eyes are still on the road. Yep, so that's one of the big things. They want you toggling things on and off all the time and yeah, taking your eyes off the road. So yeah, um, wow. you can toggle it on and off so you don't have to have it on if it is distracting to you. Sure, sure. I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah. The big thing is the comfort, you know. Yep. Again, this is a family vehicle, road trip vehicle. So if you're towing stuff or going on a family trip, 
they want you to be as comfortable and as safe as possible. Sure. So they really put a lot of thought and effort into all that. Yeah. Well, it looks like a good ride. I've got a seven and a five year old, so you know, I'm sure they would uh they would love it. They would. They each have their own uh, captain's chairs back here, so. I'd say they pair it up, but that's the one thing you don't want to pair. Yeah, well, you know, you know that's, that comes with having kids. But that's one of the nice things, too, is you can get the ones that have the TV screens in the back. Oh, cool. Uh, and then they also have the retractable window shades, too. So if they're on their tablets or oh, coloring, nice. they can right. black that sun out, too. Uh, oh, oh, those just drop down into the window. Yeah. Oh, yep, okay. Yep, this one little knob. Nice. Now, unlike this Pathfinder, I noticed that uh, all the junior theater shows are free. Yeah. So what kind of, when did that start and what kind of inspired them to do that? Yeah, great question. So obviously um, COVID shut us down in, in 2020 uh, and we moved all, a lot of our programming to virtual and um, while it was a, a difficult period, we also, what, Exciting thing is our alumni from across the country, their kids were able to sign up for junior theater classes from LA and Madison and New York and like, so we were doing it virtually. So that, that was cool. But as we were rebuilding and um, thinking more about the main stage, you know, our, our ticket prices were really only like you know, $5 for kids, $7 for adults. Um, and the thinking was, you know, if we eliminate the barrier of entry so that anybody could just come and see the productions, yep. you know, maybe we could make that up with donations from alumni to support these productions being accessible to kids. Uh, and that's that's really what, where it was born, was trying to figure out how to make programs accessible coming out of COVID. And then we found that we just really enjoyed making shows free for the public in general yeah connected with families um and then this uh this last season we added uh each production runs for two weekends and one of the six performances is asl interpreted so making it access accessible to um anybody who you know couldn't hear the production they can come to an interpreted performance oh yes so, yes yeah, so we have two uh asl performers interpreters performing alongside the show so and, and that's free too i mean that's... and did they start because of this or have they also got the program for a little while what, what's that did they start specifically for that or have they been with the program for a while no we actually they're they're kind of independent contractors the interpreters awesome. themselves so uh we have a, a different team of two every production um they're they're outstanding to watch because you know they're working really hard because they're interpreting everyone's stuff yep, so they exactly. never get a break um but the kids who come and get to see the show through the interpreters uh it's great you know just constantly you know we we renovated the theater in 2017 and we updated our accessibility for those wheelchairs or those who might have difficulty walking and getting around and, uh, so you know just a piece at a time of making sure that kids and families can have the theater yeah yeah, and I know you guys take a lot of pride in, in what you do, so, you know, making it free so it makes people just a little more enticed to go and, yeah, and see all the work hopefully. you put into it. Yeah, and you know, the one, the cool thing about the main stage productions that are offered to the public is they're fully realized shows, so, you know, they're, they're usually an hour long, we don't really do an intermission, um, but when you come to see a show, all of the actors on stage are obviously kids. Yeah. So junior theater being for kids, by kids, we want to give them that, that full experience. So you won't see adults performing. Um, but then backstage, uh, on the crews, running the deck crews and stuff, um, and captaining them, those are all kids. Uh, the light board op, the sound board op, the person calling the production, um, as far as like the light cues and the sound cues and making it work, you know, when you come to see a show, that's all students. Uh, and a few years ago, you know, I used to always organize board members and adult volunteers to help run the lobby. And somebody was like, why don't they, why don't the kids learn front of house hospitality management? They run it. I was like, oh, why not? That's a, so now we train the kids to do it. So, you know, all the adults are like two steps back, hands off the, off the wheel in case we're needed, you know, uh, but otherwise they're, they're, they're steering, they're driving. They learn, 
you know how the how the whole car works, how the whole theater works. See that? Uh, and they learn to rely on each other. And that's so cool because I don't think I'd ever say this as a kid, but now like I wish that was going on when I was a kid because that sounds really fun. Yeah, being able to do the hospitality work in front of it, you know, because. I mean, just being on stage and being a part of that is so fun that you do all the other stuff too, really. They feel part of the whole organization yourself. So. Yeah. Well, when I, you know, when I train the kids, I talk about, you know, like studies at restaurants of like the food tastes better if the front of house team is good. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? If people yep. have that yep. experience, they, even if they're eating the same food, you are part of the show. Right. You're part of the experience, hands down. So, you know, when they open the door to the theater and first thing they'll see as a kid saying welcome to Davenport Junior Theater enjoy the show you know so there's always someone to take care of all this um, and those are good skills for the kids to get to do yeah I mean you know you deal with strangers all the time people yes. that you're just meeting to walk in the door and be available to them and, um, and I do think that Junior Theater is one of the things that opened me up as a kid to kind of be more engaged with people and thinking on the spot you know because right. you're such a good improv actor yourself for whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 theater improv. Yeah, so I actually started doing improv. Uh, for those those who, who might not know, uh, improvisation is theater that's made up on the spot, so like, whose line is it anyway? Um, comedy sports has been a staple for a long time. Um, did your brother, did your brother do comedy sports for a little bit? I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he did. He's put his foot in a little bit of everything. Yeah, I think he maybe did a Blacklist, which was an improv yes, group. Yes, he did. Yep, yep. 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 So, um, but I grew up, uh, well, in high school, when I was 16, they hired me and I did comedy sports from like 99 to 2005. Then when I graduated from Ambrose, I went out to... University of Connecticut to get my master's in acting. So I was out there for a few years, but whenever I would come back, I would perform a little bit, doing some of the improv stuff. Um, but then really when I when I took over junior theater, almost all of my time was really invested there. So, uh, and then, you know, uh, my, uh, my spouse, Jessica and I started having kids in 2016. So. Long story short, I just went back to performing improv professionally last year. So oh, I'm with uh, GIT Improv. Um, they used to be the owners of comedy sports. We go out, you know, like uh, YMCA, Illinois is hosting a state banquet. We're the entertainment, you know, so we go do a 30 or 45 minute improv show up near Chicago or you know, uh, school systems often have us come in. And uh, and then we do, once a month, we do a performance down at the Black Box Theater in downtown Moli. Right, yep. For the general public. So, um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, honestly, junior theater set me up to be able to, at a young age, start performing professionally. And, you know, even though, you know, you're there for two and a half hours and, you know, you're get pay getting paid like $16, it's amazing to get yeah, you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> to get paid to, to to perform and i mean it's still it's fun it's still a blessing and i yeah i love i love love doing improv so I'm doing it yeah. it sounds like your whole life yeah what's yeah. been because you're so um like a professional in it in my opinion after you go for so long you sure do, I, i'm sure you put in your ten thousand hours into it. yeah yeah but uh what's been your favorite aspect of the program organization uh, with the kids junior, junior theater. theater yep um so, you know gosh the favorite aspect of the organization I think is that when we survey our families and our students you know our customers our Honestly, our surveys are outstanding. Like after this last theater session, of the 50 families that responded, um, every one of them said, yes, we would absolutely recommend your program. So we, we know we do what we do well, but what I love is that I have a team that still wants to do it better. Yeah. Like even there's just, you can always improve and you can always serve kids more fully, you know, whether that's 
you know, we started offering design classes a few years back, you know, because not everybody wants to be on stage. Right. But it still takes everybody to make a piece of theater on stage or off, um, you know, we're constantly having people come in and do training with our staff, uh, staffs, you know, we recently had a training about neurodiversity and how we can better structure our classrooms to be more inclusive of all kids. And so I love that aspect of the program. I love the people I work with. And then, you know, I think that rubs off on the kids and the whole environment and what they're learning as well as we're thinking about how to, how to engage them. Now, something selfish that I think is really fun is when I started in 2008, uh, one of my students then, he was three years old. It's my very first time doing like theater class showcases. And I remember him vividly because he's a preschooler and he took off off stage and went running around the theater. We had to chase him down to get him back on stage. And then uh, he just graduated this year from high school. So I, awesome. like to get to get to know him, his family, his sister, his, you know, it's like uh, a lot of sports coaches get kids like in junior high for a few years or high school for yeah. four years. Um, it's a real pleasure to watch kids grow up, you know, and a lot of them, as soon as they hit high school, disappear because they're successful in their theater program. Oh, that's right. Yep. You know, they're getting into other things and that's great, you know, and you got to love everybody with an open hand and hope that they go and do their thing and, you know. And well, they, they got you to do it for so long, do you your did? Yeah. I know my brother still to this day loves to do anything like that. Right. You know, so I know that there's just so many kids that are, are carrying it on from, you know, just, even if they do it for a short period of time, they're carrying it with them throughout their entire life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know. And, uh, you know, they have Showtime Pal, the clown, in their heart. So. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So it's an it's an interesting it's an interesting legacy. So you know, not only do we do you know theater, uh, we also have DJT dance. Uh, so we do uh, year round dance programming. We started that program in 2011. Really? Um, yeah. Focus because we have the studio spaces for it. So we were like, well, what do we have to offer the community in dance? And so, you know, we really offer an affordable opportunity to explore and learn to love dance. We're non-competitive. We don't have a, a competition team. Um, so uh, our, our recitals are free for families to come and see. There's no big, you know, tickets to enter. There's no, you know, we don't turn the kids into salespeople to raise money. Um, we, we have a shoe exchange program. So yeah. If I, you know, enroll my four-year-old in ballet and they keep taking, I just keep bringing the ballet shoes and junior theater keeps replacing them and giving you bigger ones. So that's it's awesome. so, because shoes are really, it adds up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, whether it's tap, jazz, ballet, hip hop, you know, we can exchange those around. And, um, you know, that's another thing that our, our donors are supporting, you know. I, 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 I don't know what the percentage breakdown will be, but of the donation that Coons gave, part of that's going to go into the shoe exchange program to allow families to access dance. You know, it's yeah. um, it's all of those little things. So, uh, but we do dance, and then we started doing tumbling about eight or nine years ago, and so we have a tumbling program. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there's you know the opportunity for us to do a variety of different things, but. On the theater end, we have kind of four main wings. We've got like acting classes, musical theater classes, improv, like we were talking about right. earlier, an improvisation line, and then a theater tech and design line. And those, you know, within those, we have like advanced acting, intermediate acting, advanced musical theater, um, you know, advanced improv. You can move up in those in those genres or those those areas um, if you want to keep study the Marty the growing so and that's really cool yeah and it seems that you have found a lot of success and you know your dance and public programs from you know 12 and nine years yeah you know yeah well and I mean I think the need for uh, an affordable dance experience is helpful there there are there are other affordable dance companies in that one city so you know I'm, I'm certainly not I'm not 
poo-pooing any anybody else's work, but but I do think you know for us, if kids can even try dance with us and discover that they like it, and then want to move to a more intense, uh, competitive program, you know we help them do that. We try to link them up, like like again, it's that open hand thing. Like if we're we're really there to just serve the kids and give them more positive experiences uh, and help them go where they want to go. So. Uh, but yeah, no, we do that year round now, uh, and then the three big main stage productions each year, and then we usually do uh, some sort of summer production. And then we do we do camps all summer long, week long uh, performing arts camps where kids kids are there like it's like a school, you know, they're there from 8:30 to 3:30 every day, and they come in, and the topic might be, you know, outside the box is the camp theme. And, every class gets a box full of props and they have to make their story around those boxes. And they'll write their own shows and then they perform them at the end of the week. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool. There's just sure. always, something, always something different to be doing. So, I mean, with that being said, what has been kind of the most, because I'm sure there's a lot of days you go home with a crowd of what you've done that day sure. with all these kids. Sure. What's been one of the most heartwarming? Like a day where you went home and you're like, wow, I just, I can't believe that half bit you know, that really just sent. Being my stuff at war. Yeah. Um, ah. I've had, I know there's a lot of them. Yeah, no, no, no. There's definitely a lot of them. Um, I can, I can think of one specifically as a play, it, but in, in general, and then I'll mention this fifth, yeah. seventh one. In general, I've learned like, Sometimes early on when I came back, I'd be like, why does that kid keep coming? Like, <laughs> they don't seem like they really enjoy it. Like, maybe they're not, they're not thriving. And then they have like a breakthrough and it's like, oh, right. You know, so that's always exciting to see like those aha moments. Yeah. And I've learned like, if a student is in your care, you care for them completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but we had uh, a, a student who, came into a class um, with some special needs and not wasn't really able to say his lines or anything and then when it gets to the showcase and he's on stage and he busts out that one line that he has and says it completely and his parents are crying and the teachers are crying and we're all so proud of him like uh, that happened this last season um, and those are little moments you yeah, know they're yeah. um they did definitely keep me going. I as when I get tired or worn down, it's nice that you know. So we, we have so many opportunities throughout the year where the kids are performing, and you get to sit back and see them, and, and it's like right. And that's the fuel to the fire. It's why it's why we're all here. Yeah. yeah, it's what yeah. you do it for. So uh, so that's nice. It's nice to get to see the culmination of what of what you're doing, and and it reaching the kids. Yeah. And so why, why do you feel theater is so important? I mean, I know why, but I've said here at your own words, I know you've had to just put things together well. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's obviously the acting and performance element, and like those skills, those communication skills um, that, that kids can take away and learn to be a little less fearless and take those soft skills wherever they, wherever they head. But I think theater specifically, what makes theater special is the collaborative nature of it. You know, something, <laughs> theater Theater isn't theater until there's an audience in the room. Like until that point, you're just dressed up as a knight fighting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, in an empty room. Absolutely. Like until an audience comes and you know, your job is to convince them of the honesty of the character, whether the character is a good guy or a bad guy or dealing with this or that, that they're, you're honestly communicating these ideas because all it is is communication. And then for theater too, like the moment one person says to another person, you know, whether it's the performer say to a scenic designer, like, hey, I have an idea for a show I want to do in a park can you come help me design this set? Like, the moment two people start collaborating, I think that's when it becomes theater. Right. And then, you know, for us, on the main stage end of things, and even in our classes, you know, uh, to, to have uh, 
costume designers, scenic designer, lighting designers, sound designers, technical directors, building things. Um, all of these different people having to come together and meet and have production meetings. And, you know, have a director have an idea, but most people might think like the play, you know, we're doing Jumble Book, fantastic. All right, what are we, what do we build? Like there's no instructions for how to do it. There's yeah. just words. And then you have to come together as a group behind a vision and, and put all that together. And I think that that's, um, I think it's really special. And then with the live component in the space, so having people give an hour of their life, of their time to sit and watch something that you're trying to communicate to them. Um, I think it's what makes it a unique art form. It's the ultimate collaborative art form. You know, yeah. we've been doing a lot of um, projections lately and getting more into computer technology. Our, we rehauled our uh, lighting system. So our lighting system is now all LED, computer network based. Like the technology finally got where the LED does look LED, which is great, you know, before how, it was just- How cool recent did you guys do this? 27C. So, in, so the, the theater was renovated in 1981, and that was after the nonprofit had raised, it was like $750,000 went into, used to be a chapel for the orphans, and they yeah. converted it into a theater. And some of that money also went to the three cottages that became the acting studios, and props and costumes house and stuff. But then from you know 1981 to 2017, we were kind of riding that renovation. And it was getting, you know, old. Uh, it had, you know, been 35 years, and the, um, I had been talking about wanting to renovate the theater um, to kind of ensure its longevity for a few more decades at least. And the head of the Parks Department, Parks and Recreation Department at that time, Scott Hoke, he reached out and said, you know, what if the Parks and Recreation Department puts in $70,000? Do you think, who's gonna be a $140,000 project? Do you think Junior Theater could raise the other 70? Um, and I was like, yeah, no, I think we can definitely do that, leverage that. Um, and then we were able to raise uh, 115,000. So we way blew past the 70 oh that we, gosh. yeah. So the 70 from the city partnership, then the 115 that we raised. So we were, we were, you know, the goal was to put in new seats, carpet, paint but we were able to redo the restrooms, enhance our ADA accessibility, oh, redo the electrical, and then transition to, you know, an LED-based lighting system. Uh, There's some more fuel to the flame. Oh, right, it's know? cool, yeah. And, you know, we, we'll take students too. We'll go to Chicago to see shows or uh, Minneapolis, you know, for like summer trips. We get behind the scenes tours and it's, it's always fun to see our students who are into technical theater you know, be like, oh, we have that light board. We have that sound equipment. I'm like, I know, guys. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, this is amazing that you have these things. You could walk into another theater. You know how to program this light board, this operating system. You can do it. Um, so it's yeah, it's so it's so cool to have junior theater at that place that it's current. Now, um, what are the age ranges that you guys do organization for? Because yeah. I've never really known. Yeah, yeah. So we start with students as young as three years old. So we have creative dramatics for three to four year olds. Um, and so we and we actually have on the theater end, we have Broadway Beats, which is like a little musical theater class for kids. I think I've heard of that before. Um, yeah, and then we've got our uh, theater fund, which is, you know, they perform a little skit at the end, like five little monkeys jumping on the bed or you yeah, know, yeah, something yeah. like yeah. that. So, but it, everything at Junior Theater ends in a performance on stage in front of a live audience. Everything, all of our theater, all of our dance, our tell believe, um, cause that's, that's the piece that makes you have to hone all those skills. Right. Like, whoop, I'm going off on a tangent. No, ages, you're good, you're ages. good, you're good. <laughs> so we start as young as preschool, because we also have, you know, ballet for uh, three to four year olds, tumbling for three to four year olds. Uh, but then we kind of go up to five to six, seven to eight, nine to 10, and then 11 to 12, and then teen classes. So um, really any age. And there's a, a gateway to start at any age. You know, a lot of times it, it can be like, well, you know, I'm 12, I'm probably too old for that. Like, totally not. Yeah, yeah. We have lots of 12 year olds who are just starting 
like come on over and give it a try. Yeah, you know, jump in. Jump in. Yeah, and the age ranges are pretty tight, so it's not like you're gonna be, oh, I'm 12 and I'm in a class with eight year olds. You know that kind of feeling. Like, right. no, you're gonna be there with your peers. You're gonna be there with people your age. Um, and we keep our class sizes really small. Our classes, uh, our musical theater classes are capped out at 12, but all of our other classes are capped out at 10 kids. So really? I, yeah, that's it. Like we could, we could do more. Yeah. We could add more kids, but um, it would start to dilute it. Like, yeah. Absolutely. You know, we have 12 weeks of meeting once a week to get to know these kids and put up their performance and teach them these skills. Yeah. Um, we actually, the theater program used to be 10 weeks. This fall, we actually expanded it to 12. So now we do 12 week sessions because we just kept feeling like, ah, oh, like we're just like really right <laughs> yeah, there, you know? And like the kids are really cooking. And so we wanted to have just a couple more weeks to work with them. But uh, keeping our class sizes really small is is really important, so yeah. How do we, if, if people want to get involved at Junior Theater or possibly sign up their kids who are wanting to get involved, um, how do they exactly go about that? Yeah, I mean, the, the best best place to go is just the Junior Theater website, um, which is the Dav uh, Davenport Junior Theater. Dot org. You can spell it whatever way you want. Uh, you, you'll find us. <laughs> Be like, like we'll, we'll pop up. Google, Google search us. Whatever. We're there. They were, um, yeah. But we have, uh, you know, the theater programs, dance, our main stage company. All that stuff's broken out, so you can get a real sense of the whole program, any events that we have going on, those main stage shows yeah. that people can come and see, that sort of stuff. So. Do you have any events coming up? Um, it is mid-October right now. We're wrapping up our first main stage production, which was uh, it's called Skokie Detective Charter School, and it's about a bunch of kids who are in a detective school solving a mystery. Totally fun. But the next, the next like big main stage production that families can come and see for free, we're doing uh, Finding Nemo Junior. It's a musical version of Finding Nemo that we're really? doing on stage. Yeah, so that's exciting. Um, so that's in February. So. Uh, February of 2024. Mark um, your calendars. Mark your calendars. Look because that up. sounds like a fun one. Yeah, yeah. And then our registrations open. We always, we always try to have our next session ready to register. So we do a fall session, a winter session, and a summer session. So families have the opportunity to sign up continuously throughout the year. Yep. Uh, but then, like I said, we do those cool camp programs in the summer. We do a spring break camp and stuff like that. So. There's lots of opportunities to get involved, and it's all right there, and our contact information's right there, so we're super responsive at talking to families. Sometimes parents want to come visit, show up the spaces, and we love doing that, yep. many people, so. Uh, yeah, we try to stay, we try to stay free engaged. They're easily accessible. Yeah, but help kids hone their skills, free shows, and it's absolutely fun. And it's absolutely you know, so yeah, 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 absolutely. A lot of good things about this program. So, no, you know, something that came out of um, uh, pandemic times is we also have our YouTube channel, and on our YouTube channel we have like free lessons and activities and performances and stuff that uh, kids can just like drop in and explore and look around and see like behind the scene tours of our costume shop and our props house. So. That kind of stuff's pretty fun too, and, and that's, I know, and that's, I mean, it's on YouTube. It's obviously free. Right. So, I know that uh, COVID, I mean, was tough on so many different businesses, organizations. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like you guys kind of turned COVID into a positive. It took a lot of the bad stuff and kind of found your own way to make a fun and good spin on it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting. You know, we uh, by the beginning of June, you know, things shut down in March, by the beginning of June, we had our virtual program with over 375 kids registered for it. Um, and we had, that that summer, that first summer, we had a lot of students. We actually had somebody accidentally sign up from Davenport, Florida. Oh. And it wasn't until the end of the session when we were talking about, you know, blah, 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 junior theater, and they realized like, wait, you're in Iowa? <laughs> it was like, yeah, and like, oh, we thought you were in Davenport, Florida. <laughs> um, so that was kind of fun. But uh, but once kids went back to school and they were on virtual land all the time, 
can't blame them. They didn't yeah. want to do much more of that. So yeah. we started doing outdoor productions and um, uh, stuff that allowed us to get to get back together. And uh, we definitely learned a lot. And anytime an organization is completely knocked off its model, it gave us a lot of time to really deeply think about what we do and be very intentional of coming back online and how, right, well, back in person, not online, coming back in person and how we want to serve kids. And uh, again, that's that's part of the thing that I love about the people I work with is, is everyone's there, it's very mission driven um, and everyone's there for the mission. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, no one's, no one's getting rich doing junior theater. You know, it's- uh, Your podcasts aren't for your work. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's a good way. To different put it. type of wealth. Yep. Different type of wealth. You know. I I I'm lucky. I get up, and go to work every day, and am grateful to be there. And um, even on the hard days, it, you know, it's only so hard. But yeah. You really love what you do. Yeah. So. Well, glad you found that, man. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And especially, you know, here in the Quad Cities to. Um, to have this, to, to be able, as a kid who grew up here, to be able to be part of just helping make the performing arts possible. Yeah. Um, that's cool. So, actually, the whole thing that started my junior theater journey, I uh, I won a free class at an event. So, I am still very aware when we're, we, you know, we give away classes and yeah, stuff absolutely. for fundraisers and things that, like, you never know what's just going to really trigger for somebody and help set the course in their life, whether that's sports, theater, you know, any of it. Um, everybody who's working with kids, you know, it it matters. And sometimes you don't know how much it matters for 15, 20, 25 years yeah. until you connect with someone again. Or, or like, when you oh, see like that kid, wow. he said that's graduating high school now that, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. So when I was, I was, <laughs> it was, it was funny. Uh, we had, uh, Every time we meet a new class at junior theater and, you know, we're greeting the students and I'm like, hey, I'm Daniel, you know, if you guys ever need anything, don't hesitate to like say, hey, Mr. Daniel, what's going on? And there's this really cute three-year-old this session. Every time she sees me, she's like, Mr. Daniel! And it, and it stands out so much in my mind and I'm just like, man, I wonder if you're going to be one of those kids who's here for 15 years. Um, yeah, you just never know. Sounds so. like it. Yeah, that's sounds sure, like it. Know? Yeah, she's enthused. Yeah. That's for sure. So, that's how the kids should be, and they should be there. So, how long have you yourself been with Coons then? So, I have been with uh, the Cunas Auto Group. Cunas. Oh Cunas. my gosh, I've been mispronouncing Everybody it. Everybody does it. Cunas. It's sorry, all right. sorry, Cunas. You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I'm sure they're used to it as much as they Yeah, probably. Be, probably. But, I mean, that doesn't change all the good they do, too, you know, so. Right. Um, very, ha uh, very happy to join some place that is, you know, face driven. Yeah. Uh, gives back to the community. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just does what they can. And, and I've learned a lot while I've been there, too, you know, about, you know, helping people, the financial aspect of it, working with banks, how fun that is. So, right. But, I mean, the, the most fun part of it is, honestly, this stuff. Sure. Um, they sure. have let me do a lot of interviews you can do little commercials that are fun and then that's cool and i think that's again a part of the junior theater in me you know as a kid that's just like oh my god i'm being do this in my everyday job now right which like, how cool. i mean that's something you don't really think is ever going to happen you're like maybe i'll be an actor or you know or i'm gonna go work nine to five yeah you're nine to five by making me an actor sometimes too you, know? <laughs> yeah, you never know so oh man so i just love how it kind of plays out and then you know being asked to do an interview with like hey you know it's for junior theater i was like what i did that you know and my brother did that for so long and you know i know i already know how great you guys are so yeah so yeah, yeah that's that's an, you know another another fun thing we do is we we will go out into the schools and and do workshops and um you know bring bring some of that directly to students and then you talk about variety your job like i spent an app so Davenport Parks and Recreation does a light show uh, over at Fedgemary Learning Center. It's a free light show. You pull up, tune in your radio, you know, uh, and you listen to the light show. It's a whole, a whole big bit. thing, yeah, over by the by the Putnam Museum. And um, like, you know, we got asked, you know, hey, could do you, could could somebody record a voiceover as Mother Goose? And I was up there like. 
audio editing, like trying to, there's a program called Audacity and I'm trying to like work my way through getting a good edit back for this. And it's just, it's fun. Like it's, it's just an absolute, like that doesn't have anything working directly with kids, but this like light show, mother goose, really cool reading, like it will have an impact on kids and families. I thought you were going to say, you did, say you did the Goose Boys. No, no, they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me. <laughs> we're going to have to get so. a little taste to eat it. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no. But, you know, working with my team to put that together. And, you know, it's like, you know, just the variety of stuff that you do each day. Or Yesterday I showed up and we had a steam line break in our uh, heating system. And so... There's steam everywhere and you're figuring out how to fix that like it's um it's you know be open by the time classes start like it's so many things yep yeah <laughs> you know there's this stuff that everybody would think about the the classes the development the expanding the program and then sort of this this day-to-day -day life that's always a challenge and you know i love variety in, in work so I, I i don't think i'm somebody who would thrive off like doing the same thing each month the same way always. So, right, right. Uh, but you know, that's improv, right? Improvise. Absolutely. <laughs> Figure it out, make it work. Well, to sign everybody off, uh, what is just one final thing you want to say to everybody to just tell them about the program and, and to kind of entice them to come to your party? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, the junior theater program is, is truly for any child. Uh, and, you know, we really want to find a way to help kids access the performing arts. And so that's our spirit. That's our mission. Um, and, you know, it's not always just the kid who's like, oh, they'd be a natural on stage. You know, sometimes there's a quieter power of the introvert who can get up on stage yeah. and, and really still perform. Um, so, you know, there's that aspect of it. And then if, you know, if you're somebody who cares and is passionate about the performing arts it was such a generous donation that you all made to the program today you know uh, junior theater is a non-profit people can donate and contribute right off does it have to be money either it can be your time it doesn't it's your time it could be old uh play dress up costumes would it donate to our costume shop you know there's just yeah. like tons of stuff yep. and resources that we use but we're here all year round and um you know really love for any kid to be a part of what we do. Absolutely. So, cool. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for your time. And everybody, please go to DevportJuniorsTheater.org and just see a bunch of information about this program. Yeah, cool. Thanks and for And check out. out the Nissan Pathfinder, too. Yes, check out the Pathfinder. <laughs> All right, see you guys. <laughs>